position on this is that it's not a one-way influence, that the influence runs both ways. But I think it runs both ways in an important, for an important set of reasons. Both science and democracy reject the idea that there is a single unquestionable source of authority. So science does not think that somebody declares the truth. It's something you go out and find and you have to test it and you have to do it experimentally and it has to be validated by multiple people. Um, well, I got into the field of science and technology policy by being an environmental lawyer in the first place. And the very first job I had was in an environmental law firm. And the very first research project I did was on an environmental question. So my first research when I came to the university was looking at the ways in which four countries control chemicals that are suspected of causing cancer. So science and technology clearly influence public policy, but I think what we have learned in the field of STS over the years is that the ways in which they respond to scientific claims depend very much on the culture of the country. In my research and in my own work, what I've discovered is that it's really important uh, to give people a chance to, and ask, how did it get there? How, how do people know what they know? That's an excellent question to be asking right now. Um, so, uh, in the US, government support for science and technology was only formally established after World War II. Before that, particularly during World War I, there was a lot of government support, but for very targeted purposes. And in general, the US government in the 19th century spent money partly to improve the agricultural system, so in the 1860s, shortly after those, at the end of the Civil War in America, uh, there was a whole set of universities and their purpose was to produce technical know-how in two fields and they were agriculture and the military. But in World War I, the nation discovered that investing in science and technology yielded very definite military rewards. And then in World War II and the development of the atomic bomb. But there were other developments as well, particularly in the health sector, where the discovery of antibiotics and the discovery also of pesticides. Um, and then there's, of course, targeted research in different government programs, like the space agency gets money for space exploration and historically anyway, the Environmental Protection Agency has had money for environmental research and the US Department of Agriculture has had money for agricultural research. So there's money for research in universities, mainly handled by the National Science Foundation and the National Institutes of Health. The um, social sciences have always been regarded with a lot of suspicion for public sector research, partly because the social sciences identify social problems. And often the government, politically, does not want to do anything about those problems. In that sense, uh, particularly in the States, but I think all over the world, the social sciences have had uh, less public support and less financial support by far than the natural sciences. With, with this administration, uh, it's hard to tell from one day to the next you know, mm -hmm. exactly what the policy posture is. Uh, the administration did try to cut support for science, but um, Congress on the whole supports science partly because uh, it brings money back to the states. But under the Trump administration, there has been systematic cutback, nothing on climate change, big cutbacks in those areas, big cutbacks in certain kinds of social science programs. This administration is the first one in many, many, many years in the post-war period where there is no science advisor. 
if you don't have a science advisor and you don't have an Office of Science and Technology Policy, then the chances of being able to target, set priorities, you know, those are much diminished. I'd like to thank all of the organizers of the conference and I know that it's from all across Latin America. I'm delighted at the opportunity to uh, learn from people from all over the uh, all over the continent and from the region uh, and I'm really grateful for the chance to be able to talk to you but even much more grateful for all of the things that I'm hearing back and I will go away much more educated than I came. Thank you.